Uh, so hello, thank you for inviting me again and this is the second part of my talk on the Hamiltonian data that we get from uh, the CMC immersions. So what we are going to do in the following uh, minutes is uh, first recap what we have already seen. So what we have already done is that we have constructed an open set U around the Fuchsian locus in quasi-Fuchsian space such that all manifolds in that space U are foliated uniquely by smooth monotone CMC foliation, where the CMC surface uh, value, the uh, mean value, mean curvature value ranges in minus one to one. Then what we do is that uh, given a uh, CMC surface, so recall that we are uh, foliating this region outside between the convex code and the boundary at infinity. And uh, what uh, we want to do now is that given a CMC H surface, we want to take the first fundamental form, which is the induced metric on such a surface and take its conformal class. So that would give me a point in the Dijkmuller space. And then uh, what you would do is that you would take the uh, traceless part. So the second fundamental form traceless part that gives you a real part of a holomorphic quadratic differential and the quadratic differentials recalling that are given by, uh, are giving points in the cotangent space. So this uh, 1H and QH together give you a point in the cotangent space. And what you want to do is that for a fixed manifold M, which admit a CMC foliation, so you are already near the Fuchsian locus. What you want to do is that uh, for each value of H, you want to take this value of IH and RQH and trace out the path that you get in an open neighborhood uh, of the zero section of the cotangent space times minus one and one. So what we will do in this process is kind of identify this neighborhood U that you had constructed with an open neighborhood of the zero section. And then uh, based on that, you would uh, try to show that this flow has this Hamiltonian property with respect to this function, which is minus, which is like equal to minus half times the area of the CMC H surface. Uh, this symplectic structure we're going to be using is uh, coming from the Lubil one form on T star T. We are going to talk about that, and uh, the so as we said that the uh, path, uh, like the path to proving it, would be to first uh, identify the space U in proper way, so that you could pull back the symplectic structure from T star T onto U, and then you utilize the main uh, formula for Hamiltonian uh, formula, like to you 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 basically utilize the main condition for showing some vector field is Hamiltonian and do that. So. Let's uh, recap uh, like these basic uh, definitions that we will use. So a symplectic manifold will be by definition a uh, even dimensional manifold, which is uh, non-degenerate, which uh, at each tangent space I have a symplectic form, which is non-degenerate, non skew symmetric and closed differential uh, form. And uh, so the example that one can keep in mind is again uh, just is uh, for example if you just take r2n then you have these coordinates x1 to xn and y1 to yn then uh, your uh, symplectic form is given by just the wedge of dxi with dyi which is q-symmetric non-degenerate closed by definition and uh, like for example this is a standard symplectic form on r2n and if you just want to consider the next example, what you could do is that you given any manifold n, you could take the cotangent bundle and the cotangent bundle comes with a canonical uh, symplectic form, which takes by taking the uh, derivative of the Louisville form with a minus. So the Louisville form is a one form that is essentially what we will define. And uh, based on that, we will define the symplectic form on the cotangent space. So what you have first are the following that you have this projection from T star n to n, uh, which is the canonical one, just recording the variation of the base point. Uh, and then what you want to do is that you have the derivative of this map T pi, which is now a map from the tangent to the cotangent space to the tangent space. And in this process, what you want to do is that you want to just uh, define this one form that I have done here from the tangent space to the real num tangent space to the cotangent space to the real number, which is just evaluating. Uh, so if you are at this point X, which is given by uh, X is a point on T star N. So it has a base point P and then it has a cotangent vector Q. Then the one form uh, uh, evaluated at this point for any vector V, 
where is the vector in t of the, the tangent space to the cotangent space is given by the evaluation of the uh, variation of the base point which is giving you actually a tangent vector on the manifold n but you evaluate it with respect to the cotangent form so basically it's the you can also say like i mean this is the duality pairing giving you the isomorphism between the tangent and the cotangent spaces as well i mean that's the thing and uh, yeah so this is the louville one form and the symplectic form that you get is given by taking minus of d lambda so what we are going to do essentially is in the following places we are going to replace n with tichmuller space and uh, we are going to consider the Liouville form T star on T star of this Tychmuller space. And uh, we, have, we have already recorded that uh, this uh, tangent vectors, uh, sorry, cotangent vectors to Tychmuller space are given by pairs C, Q. And so we need to see how this Liouville form evaluates on these points which are given by variation of the conformal class with some variation of the second factor but we require some more technical tools to write it down it like that but what we are going to do is basically take some tangent vector to the cotangent space at a point c comma q and see uh, how the deformation induced by that tangent to the cotangent vector induces a deformation of the base point c and uh, the symplectic pairing would be just given by recording this base point c and the q as here in the case of a normal manifold so the next part is to talk about given a symplectic manifold the next thing would be to talk about this hamiltonian flows that we are discussing so what are they so given a vector field x on m uh, is called a hamiltonian vector field if there is a function f such that uh, the d of f of v when evaluating on a tangent vector is equal to the symplectic pairing of the vector field with that vector the function f is called the Hamiltonian function and x is called the Hamiltonian vector field. So a basic example as you could see is that if you take R2 with the polar coordinates R dr by d theta, I mean it's another way of writing ds by dy and uh, the function that you would get by taking the square of the distance from the origin is essentially the Hamiltonian function for the angular vector field. So essentially like uh, by del del theta, I mean the vector fields would integral curves are these circles centered at the origin and uh, these are these are also the Hamiltonian vector field for the function which is giving you the distance from the origin. So in some sense you could say that this uh, Hamiltonian like the, if the vector field is uh, Hamiltonian with respect to some function then this flow line would be contained in this level set of this function and uh, this there is I mean if you just want to rewrite the criteria for something to be Hamiltonian some vector field to be Hamiltonian then it is exactly that I need to have this i x of omega is equal to d of f as uh, this is by definition is equal to omega of x of v uh, by, by acting at a tangent vector v for sure and uh, what we need to do now for our setting all these things that we had defined till here are in a time independent frame and now what a time independent setting and what we need to do is that we need to uh, introduce this time parameter for which at every time t I have this vector field f and this uh, sorry I have this vector field x and the function f and such that x t is a vector field and uh, and f is a function now with a parameter in t and we need to check exactly at each level of t I have this Hamiltonian condition being satisfied. So Ah, so sorry there is a repetition of slides i guess but anyway so what we want to do now is first as i said uh, so this is done when we actually have this symplectic structure on this neighborhood of u or in this space of cmc surfaces so that we could actually study this flow but that is not the case because uh, this map that we had defined from given an h to this pair of data realizing the cmc surface is not well defined a priori we have only actually shown that this foliation exists in a neighborhood of the Fuchsian locus and not in general for any hyperbolic ends and if you want to say something like uh, the space of cmc surfaces in quasi Fuchsian manifold is a manifold then it would be something not so easy to say so what you want to do here is uh, kind of uh, you break down the space u as some kind of bundle over minus one to one with uh, these fibers being this set uh, uh what is this set uh we define the cmc h surfaces to have small principle first you define a criteria for cmc h surfaces so that they are included in this set uh and that is this uh, traceless part of two zero square is less than one minus h square 
and uh, what you have from there is that if you restrict now this map fh which is sending uh to t study then this is a local uh, this is in fact a local dfo onto its image so how do you show it's a local dfo first so recall that this uhc surfaces are the space of cmc surfaces having the mean curvature range and then satisfying the inequality so this uh, implicit function theorem that we actually applied to deform these examples in the Fuchsian case to the uh, quasi Fuchsian case gives you the unique solutions for this UH from T star T. So, this implicit function theorem that gives you the local homeo property of this around the Fuchsian locus, because I mean the Fuchsian locus is corresponding to the zero section of T star T. And, uh, because like uh, in a Fuchsian locus, the CMC H surfaces are the, will be this uh, unique uh, total, I mean, equidistant copy of this totally geodesic surface and they will have quadratic differentials associated to them zero because their second fundamental form would be vanishing. So what you want to do in this setting is now, yeah, so once you have this UH, 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 to study the implicit function theorem that we used to show the existence of CMC H surfaces, uh, gives you a local homeo property then uh, you have that uh, you you then have that it's an injective map because uh, this inject and basically to prove this injectivity you need this inequality because i mean you can uh, evolve so what is the main idea is that if you take two g1 phi1 so i am taking a metric and a quadratic differential directly and g2 phi2 and if they map to the same t star t then you have that this both pairs under this map give you the solution for the cmc surfaces and then you could try to show that since you have assumption phi1 equal to phi2 then this g2 would be power 2u times g1 because both of them landing in the same point in t star t and this is the conformal equivalence relation right so what you want to do now is to apply the gauss uh, sorry the kodachi the gauss equation to this pair uh, g1 phi1 suppose or e power 2u g1 phi1 which is essentially phi2 again uh, suppose and what does the gauss equation say, equation say that the determinant of the shape operator so the determinant of the second fundamental form with respect to the first fundamental form is equal to 1 plus the gaussian curvature or the gaussian curvature of the first fundamental form so when you write this down and what you have is that what you want here is that you want 1 plus k of e power 2 ug this has some expression in terms of curvature of g and then here you have that the traceless part of 2 is equal to the real part of q this will give you an expression in the traceless part of q essentially and uh, you further have that the uh, second fundamental form will break as that and uh, asking for this uh, so this inequality guarantees that this u is zero and this map will be injective so given that you have local injectivity uh, local homeo and injectivity what you want is that it's a, a proper map and if you have properness then you have like all the ingredient to show it's a homeo onto its image and uh, if it's a homeo onto its image what you want to do is that you can want to show it's a diffeo onto its image by having this unique smooth structure that uh, helps you to pull back the differentiable structure of uh, the open neighborhood of t star t to this set u fiber wise so because you have proved that it's a local diffeo for each fiber and you're breaking up u into this fiber so what you are essentially doing is that you are taking this Fuchsian locus and you are taking this uh, minus one to one and uh, then you have this open neighborhood u that you had constructed and then you will have this open neighborhood so let's draw it like that and then you would have this open neighborhood u times minus one and one and here so you will have your flow lines uh, which you can show that they exist for a small time and this is what we are trying to study in some sense because you are uh, identifying this open neighborhood around the Fuchsian locus times minus one and one if you introduce the time parameter with uh, open neighborhood of the zero section of t star t times minus one and one and uh, uh, when you are in this situation then you can pull back the symplectic structure fiber wise so suppose i this was my point h then my fiber uh 
cross h is um, so the, the, so this is uh, so suppose this is sorry so this is my suppose this is the point h here and then this is my uh fiber which is oops sorry 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 so 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 if this is my point H here, then this is my fiber UH and this would be, uh, so at every point I have some fiber uh, UH prime for different values of H prime and uh, they also get multiplied by minus one and one in some sense because you are uh, slice wise breaking down this U times uh, minus one and one into UH times H. So at each cross section I have a point and I want to say that the flow line that I get by for, for a fixed quasi function manifold that has a CMC foliation, the flow line I get by tracking down the data of CMC surface at each of these fibers together give me a Hamiltonian flow in an open neighborhood of the zero section. What it's a mix, bit, bit misleading because it kind of shows that this flow is existing for all time, but it's not. What we show is that this flow exists for short time. Uh, showing the flow exists for a long time would actually prove the conjecture because you are showing that you, you can recover so there is this thing that if you are given a CMC foliation you can get a Hamiltonian flow out of it that was this thing of Moncrief and it also works on the other way around that if you are given a Hamiltonian flow on the cotangent space starting from data of one CMC surface and if it exists for all time then you could also recover the foliation and uh, we what we have shown is that this flow exists for a small time by utilizing the foliation that we have proved. So as I said, you could now pull back the symplectic structure and this would give you uh, the tools required to carry on with the computations to check the criteria for Hamiltonian. So, so first you take this vector field. Uh, uh, so you call H to be the area of the CMCH surface and we X H be the vector field which is generated at DH at h is equal to h0 of f h of m uh, at x h0 of m and what you want to do is now show this criteria that uh, you have minus half of d of a h is equal to the pullback of the contraction under the map f h right that is what you want to show and then you have further you have omega to be given by minus d lambda at is the Liouville form uh, and then you have Carthas formula which says that the lead derivative of lambda would be equal to the sorry the contraction of d lambda with respect to x plus the d of the contraction of lambda and uh, then if you just apply that to this formula what you want to do is now basically compute this pullback of the lead derivative and uh, other terms which will actually come out in a nice way and uh, here we recall that the cotangent symplectic form is given as this uh, conformal class and the traceless part of the second fundamental form uh, at a point uh, at the point sorry at the conformal class second part of the fundamental form the cotangent symplectic form is given by uh, one fourth time integral over s of the uh, yeah, the uh, the inner product with respect to the metric of i of the uh, of the tangent vector at the point i that you get out of the variation so variation of i with the traceless part of the second fundamental form at that point. Uh, this requires some computation to show. Uh, they have been done in, for example, Mazzoli uh, paper on k surfaces in twenty twenty one. So, and other places as well. I mean, this is just one reference where you can find this, so like, yeah. So now what we do in the rest of the proof is just compute these terms. So in order to, so what we want to show is that we want to compute this, uh, we want to basically compute this lead derivative term and uh, we want to check this derivative of the form along the vector field generated by the CMC surfaces. So if you start with the H, you start with foliating this by CMC H surface, suppose H0, H1, and then you want to evaluate what is this variation of the form lambda along this vector field generated by the CMC surfaces. So it kind of makes sense to take this region bound by the CMC surface uh, to random CMC, to CMC H surfaces for values H0, H1 at some time to take the derivative and try to estimate some things. And uh, essentially you are doing that same is that 
and then you also want to apply some stokes theorem kind of uh, setting to compute the variation of this region in terms of the areas that appear at the boundaries so uh, what you do is that you call this region uh, as the vol disclosed manifold as vol h0 h1 is the uh, defined to be the volume and is defined to be the region bound by two cmc eight surfaces and then its volume is the n sorry h0 h1 and then its volume is called vol h0 h1 and uh, what you want to do now is that uh, you want to utilize the w volume which is given by formula for a closed three manifold for a closed manifold with boundary as this and uh, when you put this n is equal to this region between two cmc surfaces then the w volume becomes equal to the volume minus the uh, volume minus uh, this uh, h1 by 2 area of h1 plus h2 by 2 area of h2 because you could just take the h out here because this uh, mean curvature is constant on the boundaries so if you are given the w volume and the volume one more thing that you would require is a formula for the derivative of the volume which is given by this uh, differential shafley formula of riemann schlenker which says that this uh, differential of the volume of n is given by the integral over the boundaries of the different of the two times differential of the mean curvature plus half times the inner product of the first and the second fundamental uh, sorry first the inner product with respect to the metric i of the first variation of the first fundamental form with the second one and uh, what you want to do adapted to this setting is basically compute the terms uh, that so let us write down this differential Schlafly formula on the right hand side so that it's useful so you have two times the two del h plus half del i comma two d a and uh, notice that uh, what we want to do now is uh, first first let's restrict to this first part where you have the d of the volume of h0 h1 is given by the differences of the pullback of lambda uh, by the maps h0 h1 plus h1 by 2 minus h0 by 2 so how do we get this formula here to describe briefly what we are doing now is basically using this variational formula of the volume of n and uh, we want to keep the cmc8 surfaces fixed that is the value of h0 and h1 and we want to vary the manifold and in the process when you do that this term becomes equal to zero because you want to keep that fixed and uh, uh, you are left with this one fourth time the uh, the inner product between the variation of the conformer class and the second uh, fundamental form and uh, what you want to do now is uh, kind of break up this second fundamental form into the traceless part first the curvature part and then you have one fourth time the inner product between the second fundamental form plus one fourth time h times the inner product between these and uh, what happens as a result is that this gets somehow identity this so this is this is the expression for the symplectic pairing and uh, here you have a term which is uh, related to the variation so this is equal to the variation of the area form up to certain factor which is probably so this is equal to two times that yeah this is now that is how you get this half times h times dh on the right hand side and rewriting the equation of the w volume in terms of the volume it just gives you the second line now uh, you are done so you know that the total variation of the w volume when you keep the surfaces fixed but to change the manifold is given by the differences of the symplectic form evaluated on this uh, uh, the difference of the symplectic form under the pullback maps uh, of h fh1 and fh0 and now the second part as we were saying was computing this pullback of the lead derivative of this form lambda which is actually by definition is equal to this uh, term in the middle the derivative of the pullback of lambda at the point h is equal to zero and uh, if you use the line above then this gives you back the it is equal to the derivative of the variation of the w volume so if you can compute what is the derivative of the w volume or the derivative of the volume with respect to h then you are done and uh, this is now keeping the manifold fixed and changing the surfaces and how you do it is that you want to say that the derivative at h is equal to h0 of the w volume is equal to the pullback 
So you basically essentially prove that this is equal to the pullback of i x h zero of lambda plus half a h zero. So for this first you require again the Shapley formula, but you first require the variation of the volume, and there you do what you at this time you keep the variation of h equal to one because you you want to keep the manifold fixed, but you want to see how this value of the volume is changing as you are changing the CMC h surfaces. Uh, so keeping this fixed and changing that you want to check this derivative of the change of these volumes right so what you want to so yeah so uh, this will account to computing this variational formula keeping the variation of h is equal to 1 and uh, variation of h is equal to 1 because you want to get a cmc h surface at every level and uh, when you do that, you have now that these boundaries are again CMCH surfaces and then you have this half area form coming out. Uh, and again, you break it up the second fundamental form as the traceless part plus the mean curvature. And that gives you the first form. And there is some nice cancellation happening here as well. So first you compute the derivative of the volume and then you again utilize that the W volume is equal to the volume minus the mean curvature to get the derivative of the W volume, which finally has this expression. And then uh, the last part would be to just take the total derivative on all the sides. And uh, he, from this, you have that this is equal to that. And from uh, here, you have that this is also equal to that. And if you just now uh, write down like what is the so. So you bring that on the left hand side, put that on the right hand side, you reach your final conclusion. So this is what uh, this topic is about. And uh, I would also like to say that, uh, yeah, I mean, this work, uh, I mean, uh, a similar treatment had been done for K-surfaces where the Hamiltonian function, K-surfaces foliating the region between the convex core and the boundary at infinity where the Hamiltonian function is again are given by this area of the k surfaces up to certain scaling and uh, by so this work has been done by Matsoli as i said and uh, yeah so this concludes my talk so uh, both of them so thank you for your attention uh, uh, see you uh, and thanks for inviting me again bye